Hello everyone. Uh, now it's time for the fourth video in this series of swatching out all my watercolors. Um, you can go back and check out my videos swatching my greens and earths and blues, but this video is going to be showing the reds and violets. Uh, there's 33 here in total from a few different brands. Uh, I didn't really put them in the best order, but hopefully it will still be interesting to see them. Okay, let's get started. Uh, first we have Rembrandt Cadmium Red Light. Uh, this is made from PR108, which is Cadmium Red, and PO20, which is Cadmium Orange. Uh, this this colour's been discontinued by Rembrandt now. Um, I don't think they have a Cadmium Red Light at all. I think it's just Cadmium Red and Cadmium Red Deep. I do like this one, it's really vibrant. And it's not as opaque as you would expect, especially when you dilute it down a bit. Uh, next is White Knight's Cadmium Red Light. Uh, this one is just a single pigment, PR108. I have a bit of a hatred towards White Knight's tube paints. Uh, this is the only one I have left. Um, I really didn't like the texture of the paint when I squeeze it out. Just something strange about it to me. Uh, that was a year and a half ago though, so Maybe I'll think differently now, I've got a bit more experience. I do enjoy using White Knight's pans though. Next is Schmincke Horridam Cadmium Red Light. Uh, this is also PR108. Uh, this is from a half pan I got in the water flask set. Yeah, it's a nice easy paint to paint with and it re-wets really easily. Um, I think it's a little less orange than the previous two. Uh, yeah, it's a nice, a nice cadmium red, I think. Uh, now we've got Van Gogh Permanent Red Light. This one is PR254, which is a pyrrole red. Uh, not a paint I've really used before. Um, it looks like it would be an okay replacement for the cadmium reds if you didn't want to use them. Um, it's not particularly transparent. But that, that might be just because it's a Van Gogh colour. I don't know if that, this pigment's meant to be transparent or not. It's nice and vibrant though. Next is Rembrandt Cadmium Red Medium PR108. Uh, this is another nice cadmium red from Rembrandt. Uh, Rembrandt used to have three cadmium reds in their range. They had a light, medium, and deep. I think now it's just just the two, just a cadmium red and a cadmium red deep. Um, I think I prefer this one to the cadmium red light. Uh, I always like to have a intense red available, even if I almost never use it. So next is Magello Mission Gold Permanent Red. This is made from PR112, which is a naphthol red. It's a nice paint, but according to handprint.com, it might not be very light fast. So I'd have to do my own light fast tests on it. I've got to say, it is a beautiful color though. Uh, now it's Magello Mission Gold Permanent Red Deep. Uh, this is PR254 Pyrrole Red. Wow, this is a really vibrant red. Yeah, I really like it. Um, yeah, I don't really use this one very often, but yes, yeah, it's... it's Really, really vibrant. I'm, I might start using it. And the next colour is a little out of place. I should have included it in my Earth Pigments video, but I forgot that I had it. It's Magello Mission Gold Light Red. It's a mix of PBR25, PR112 and PY150. It's another of Magello's strange Earth mixes, because Light Red is usually a PR101. It doesn't look like a light red to me, but 
it makes surprisingly nice mixes. Uh, then we have Holbein Perylene Maroon. This is PR179. Uh, this is another color I don't use very often. Um, there's no particular reason that I don't use it. It's just um, I prefer just using a light red and Indian red in my landscape palettes. Uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful blood red color. Um, yeah, I really should use it more often, I think. Uh, next is Lucas Madder Lake Deep. Uh, this is made of PR264, which is a pyrrole rubin. Uh, this red is a bit deeper than the PR254 th that we've seen previously. Um, it's a good red, but Handprint recommends performing your own light fastness tests on it. And the final paint on this top row is Rembrandt Permanent Matter Lake. And this is made up of PR264, Pyrrol Rubin, and PV19 Quinacridone Rose. Now this looks a bit deeper red than the Lucas. I guess that's the PV19 in it. Um, I think I prefer this one to the Lucas. Yeah, it's a bit more interesting to me. Right, now onto the next row. Uh, we've got Van Gogh Madder Lake Deep. Uh, this is also PR264. Um, I'd say this one looks pretty similar to the Lucas Madder Lake Deep. Okay, now we've got Magello Mission Gold Rose Madder. This is made from PR176, which is Benzimidazolone Red. Um, it's not a pigment I've seen used all that often. Um, another one, oh yeah, I think this is another one you should perform your own light fast tests on. Uh, next is Rembrandt Carmine. Uh, this is the old version, that's, which is made from PR264 and PV19. The new version is a single pigment, PR264. I quite like this paint. Um, I've been using it a bit more recently. Uh, I'm not that sure I'll get the new version when it runs out though. I think there's other reds that I like more. Uh, now we have Schmincke Horridam Carmine. This is made from PV19. Uh, this one seems to move quite a bit on the paper on the wet paper. Uh, yeah, I, I really like this one. Uh, next is Magello Mission Gold Rubin, and it's PR two five four and PR one one two. Yeah, it's a nice red. Uh, it's very vibrant. And then we got Magello Mission Gold Burgundy Red. Uh, this is made from PR177. Uh, it's another pigment that's only marginally light fast. Um, yeah, probably not a good one to use if you plan to display or sell your artwork. Uh, I think I'll just use it in the sketchbook. Um, yeah, I very much doubt I would buy it again once it runs out. Uh, next is Kusakabe Ruby Red. Uh, this is PV19. Yeah, it was nice, nice and vibrant and highly pigmented. 
Yeah, I quite like this one. I like it more than I've liked other Kusakabi paints, I think. Now it's Magello Mission Gold Bright Rose. This is made from BV7, BV10 and PR122. Uh, both the BV7 and BV10 are fluorescent pigments or dyes and they're not light fast. Um, it's a lovely opera rose type colour though. Yeah, I think it would be great for certain types of florals. Now we have Lucas Genuine Rose, PV19. And this always seems like a strange paint to me. Um, it's quite pinkish. Yeah, it's a pinkish pastel colour to my eyes. Um, I don't usually think of PV19 being this opaque either. Uh, yes, yeah, it's definitely not one of my favourites. Now we have Van Gogh Dusk Pink. This is PBK11 Oxide Black and PV19. This is one of Van Gogh's lovely highly granulating paints. Um, I should probably have taken this from a pan rather than the top of the tube. I think I picked up, well, maybe it's separated in the tube because it feels like I got more black than PV19. It still looks pretty interesting though. Uh, then we have Jackson's Opera Rose. This is PR81-1. Uh, this is another fug fugitive pigment that is going to fade over time if you expose it to sunlight. Um, it's to be expected with Opera watercolours though, so it's not really something I should complain about. Um, I think I prefer the Magello Bright Rose to this one anyway. Okay, onto the final row now. Uh, this one is Magello Mission Gold Bright Opera. It's BV10 and PR122. Yeah, the, the first thing you notice is this is really, really bright. Um, it always shocks me just how bright this opera is. It's like really fluorescent. Yeah, but unfortunately, like all operas, it's not light fast. Uh, next is Kusakabi Magenta. This is PR122 and BV10. I actually really like the colour of this paint. It's just a, a bit of a shame that it contains the non-light fast BV10. Uh, then we have Quinacridone Rose Magenta PR122. That's from Rembrandt. Um, I hadn't used this pigment in the past, but I'm really starting to like it. It's, uh, it's, it's a really versatile pigment to have in your palette. Uh, then we have Van Gogh Quinacridone Rose. And this one is PV19. It's a nice and useful paint, but I much prefer the Rembrandt PR122. Um, this one is much cheaper though. And then we have Magello Mission Gold Red Violet. It's made up of PR122 and Ultramarine Blue, which is PB29. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what to think about this paint. I mean, the color's nice. Uh, when I saw that there was PB29 in the mix, I thought we might have some granulation. But I guess there's only a tiny bit in there, so you don't see any. Uh, then we have Rembrandt Permanent Red Violet, which is PV19. 
Uh, I like this one much more than the Magello. Yeah, it's a beautiful deep red violet. I really like it. I'm not sure how useful it is in the types of paintings I like to do, but yeah, definitely a nice color. And then we've got Magello Mission Gold Bright Violet. This is BV7, PR122, and PV32. It's another really lovely color. But again, it contains a non-light fast pigment. Um, Magello have quite a few reds and violets with the BV10 and BV7, etc. in them. Um, yeah, they do make some lovely colors, though. Uh, next is Magello Mission Gold Bright Clear Violet. This contains pigments PV32, PB29, and PR122. Uh, this paint doesn't interest me all that much. Um, I think I'd rather use a PV23 or mix my own with Ultramarine and PR122. Um, it doesn't look all that great when it's dry either, in my opinion. Uh, next is Magello Mission Gold Compose Violet Deep. Uh, this is made from PB153 and PR122. I wasn't expecting to find a violet mixed with Thalo Blue Green Shade. Um, are there any, any other brands that have this mix? I can't think of one off the top of my head. But it actually looks really nice. I'd say I much prefer this to the Bright Clear Violet. Uh, then we have Holbein Permanent Violet. This is made from PV23, which is dioxazine violet. Now, purples and violets are not really my thing, but if I was going to use one, it would most likely be this one. Um, it's nice and vibrant, and I always like painting with whole wine paints. Okay, and finally we have Van Gogh Dusk Violet. This was made of PBK11 and PV23. Now, just like when I painted out the Dusk Pink, I think this must have separated a bit in the tube because it just seems a lot blacker than I remember. Yeah, I'm probably not showing these Dusk colours at their best. Yeah, maybe... Maybe you should look at my old video where I painted them out. Okay, that's all of them painted now. And here they are in daylight when fully dry. Yeah, I'd say they're all pretty nice colors. I'm pretty shocked again at just how many reds and violets I have. I don't tend to use them, but I just wanted to try them all. Um, I've actually just realized that I forgot a couple. I'm pretty sure I've got a Rembrandt Cobalt Violet and an Ultramarine Violet somewhere. Uh, yeah, silly me. Maybe I'll just have to paint them all out again. So what do you think? Are there any paints here that you particularly like? And what are your favorite reds and violets from other brands? Let me know in the comments. And as always, thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you in the next video. Bye bye.